Hi, my name is Abby and I'm a PNW nursing student and today I'm going to be showing you how to administer a tube feeding. So first you want to gather your equipment, check the amount of feeding that you're going to be giving the patient, uh, the frequency that you're going to be feeding them for, and you want to check the expiration date on the formula to make sure it's not expired, and the frequency and timing and amount will be in the medical record, so you'll check that before you administer the feeding. Then you want to perform hand hygiene, put on PPE, you want to go in, introduce yourself, um, ID the patient, make sure their name and date of birth matches their bracelet, and then you want to explain the procedure to the patient, That, and then you want to assemble your equipment on an overbed table or other surface which within reach, which is this. Um, I'm going to close the patient's curtains to provide privacy. I'm going to raise the bed to a comfortable working height, which is usually elbow height, but this is couch, so it doesn't go up. Um, I'm going to perform an abdominal assessment, which you want them laying flat for this. So um, you would only expose the area that you need, which would be the abdomen, of course. And then um, you would inspect to make sure there's no distension or anything like that. Um, then you want to oscillate, then you want to percuss the four quadrants, and then you want to palpate the four quadrants. Um, and then after that, you can cover the patient back up, and then you want them sitting up at a um, 30 to 45 degree angle before you administer the tube feeding. So this is about right. Um, and then next, you want to check the placement of the NG tube. Um, using several methods, you can, um, I'm going to pawn gloves for this. Um, the first method is to measure the exposed tubing, um, to make sure that the tube has not, um, came out or moved any from its original position. So you'd measure from the tip of their nose all the way down to where you had previously marked it. There should be like a mark already um then um you want to check the ph so to do that you'd get a syringe like this and you take the cap off and then you would aspirate some of the um gastric contents and then you'd use a ph strip and just put it on there to test the ph um, and it should be acidic because the stomach acid is acidic. Um, then you want to check the color consistency of the aspirated abdominal contents. And then if it's not possible to aspirate all the contents, then you need to um, perform an x-ray based on facility policy to make sure that the tube is where it's placed. Like if you can't aspirate contents or like if this has moved, then you need to do an x-ray before um, administering a tube feeding. Um, after you've like checked the placement using two or more steps, um, then you want to aspirate all the gastric contents. So you want to draw it all out to check the amount of residual fluid in the stomach um, and to check how much feeding is left in the stomach and um, we then you want to return it um, based on the facility policy and then if it did not it see the residual um, volume um, then you can continue with the tube feeding if not then you would hold it and then you want to flush the tube with 30 to 50 milliliters of water. So you just kind of let that go in. And then you want to disconnect the syringe and put on the capped end to make sure nothing comes out. And then this is where you'll prepare the formula. You'll remove your gloves. Um, and then I only have one pair of gloves. So obviously I would have removed these gloves. And then we're going to put on more gloves before handling the feeding or anything like that. So these are clean gloves. And then we're getting ready to administer the feeding. So we're going to be using a large syringe system. So you want to remove the plunger to a... Um,
to a um, 30 to 60 milliliter um, syringe. And then um, you want to attach the syringe to the feeding port. And then you want to um, pour in the administered amount, like the predetermined amount of feeding. And then you want to open the clamp on the feeding tube and allow the formula to enter the tube. Um, and you can regulate the speed of the tube feeding by um, lowering or lowering and then hiring it. Um, and you never want to like force the feeding or anything like that. Like you don't want to put the plunger on and you don't want to like force it. You want it to just dra gravity feed. Otherwise you'll cause abdominal upset if you try to force the feeding and it will cause discomfort for the patient. Um, then, um, when the feeding is almost completed, um, you want to add 30 to 60 milliliters of water to this. Again, laying it gravity feed, not pushing it, um, just to clear out the tube and make sure all the feeding has been delivered. Um, and then when the syringe is emptied, you want to hold the syringe high to make sure that all of it's completely out before detaching the syringe from it. And then after you do that, you want to clamp this off and then detach it. And then, um, cover the end with the cap again and then you should be okay um, then then you want to observe the patient's response to the feeding um, during and after the feeding to assess whether like they're having any discomfort um, and then you want to assess their abdomen again like we did before using inspection um, auscultation and then percussion and palpation you want to do that at least once a shift and then um, you want to have the patient sit up and remain sitting up at that 30 to 45 degree angle for at least an hour after you do administer the feeding um, and then you want to remove your equipment and then you'd off obviously uh, return your patient to um, a position of comfort like I said you would keep them up for an hour after the feeding um, you'd raise the side rails and lower the bed. Um, you'd put on gloves and you'd wash the equipment. And then um, you'd remove your gloves. You would um, remove PPE. And there was none indicated in this. And then um, you'd perform hand hygiene. And then that would be it.